everyone. Welcome to TSP Weekly. This is your tech startup podcast for Thursday, September 18th, 2014. Today we are recording in the Velocity Garage in the Strong Bad room, I believe. Nice. Nice uh, callback to uh, early millennial um, internet culture, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of Homestar Runner. Um, my name is Darren Conley. I'm a local tech entrepreneur here in Kitchener, Waterloo. And with me, as always, is my co-host, fellow tech entrepreneur, Stephen Campbell. How are you today, Stephen? I'm shaken, not stirred today. <laughs> uh, we had is some that, AV difficulties today. Is that a James Bond today. line, I think? I think it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. We did have some AV difficulties. We uh, The mics got left behind, and yep. then we didn't have a power cord, and luckily... Yep. Luckily, our good friends here in the Velocity Garage, our, our guest for today, who I will introduce in, in uh, just one minute, were able to scrounge it up for us. So I apologize um, to yeah. Donna and to Bert in the AV department for giving them a heart attack. <laughs> but uh, so spring is in or fall is in the air. Yep. Um, this is my little my little pitch. Project time at Conestoga College. So All so right. exciting. Yep. We're forming new teams and having new visions. Um, so it's kind of neat every year. I'm in my third year of a, a program at Conestoga College, so an exciting time for me because new visions and new team building is always the easy part, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you make it sound so glamorous, Stephen. It is. <laughs> One of the pitches uh, that I wanted to give is we're doing a second annual design and innovation conference at Conestoga College. Okay. Uh, the IT innovation and design um, uh, class is putting it on. It's November the 13th. Mm-hmm. Um, it's sponsored by the Center for Entrepreneurship, um, the Executive Dean of Entrepreneurship and Applied Research, mm-hmm. uh, Barbara Fennessy, yep. uh, as we know and love, uh, has, is one of our sponsors. Yeah, and she was um, a guest on this podcast yep. uh, so a, we, a few uh, uh, weeks back. Really uh, mm-hmm. appreciate her support. We're going to be looking uh, at a keynote speak. Uh, we're going to do some workshops, some roundtables, sort of like some Ask Me Anythings, do you, and then a little networking at the end. So. Can you tell us who the keynote is, or is that still So we're works? still in the planning stage of that, but okay. we're looking at November 13th. Uh, we're getting the uh, proper rooms set up and we've filled out the structure and got the sponsorship so we're sort of looking yep. at uh, keynote speakers and some workshops and now um, here, here's some the most- certain names have come up like Wes and uh, <laughs> you know some of our other previous guests yeah sure. Mr. Kirk Here, up and here's the most important question are, is there free food being provided for those who are attending yes we have a sponsor we're all really we're also looking for additional sponsors but yeah so we'll we'll definitely okay. be providing caffeine at the bare minimum all right well so, I'm there if yeah, there's so free food stay I'm there. tuned here for more information <laughs> well let's uh, now that we've got the commercial out of the way Thank you. <laughs> let's introduce our guests here um, today we have two guests with us uh, Mr. Chris Braun Hello, Hello. I, good to be I, here. I'm always afraid that I'm going to pronounce the people's names wrong. I, I should really ask before, but Braun is pretty easy, I guess. Braun is, is pretty Brown? easy, especially, Brown, for, Brown? Uh, especially yeah. for this area, right? You yeah. Know, good, good Germanic name. There's yeah. a... Yeah. A, Unrelated, but a few bronze uh, families involved in business in the area. So. Yeah, it's yeah. we got a nice German uh, representation in this part of the world. Right, you know yeah. what to do. Deutsch? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but you did understand that. Yep. Um, we also have uh, Corey Schnur. Schnur, is got that it right? too. Yeah, that's German too for string. Well, string maker, kind of like a blacksmith, but making string. Sweet. Yeah. Schnur. I, it, am I going out on a limb to assume you might have got teased a little bit with that last name growing up, or no? No, just most people can't pronounce it. Oh, okay. it's a lot of schnur or so schnars. You, so you but can you tease it. them when they mispronounce. Exactly. It. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. I was always bigger yeah. than everybody. I was so. going to say, look at <laughs> Bill. Yeah, he was the not the one who was teased. getting picked on. <laughs> no, I was Are not you the little guy. Now, Darren? Yeah. No, no, I've, I've never heard the name schnur, and, and it's it's an interesting name. No, it's cool. Um, but we're not here to talk about last names. We're here to talk tech. So uh, let's. Let's take a look at a few articles that came up uh, this week. Now, um, it's funny. When I was uh, kind of going through the research and, and seeing what we wanted to talk about, um, we kind of ended up with two sets of two mm-hmm. with these articles. So um, the first set is all about using technology as uh, personal assistant, uh, mm-hmm. kind of for personal assistant purposes. Um, so the first one is uh, it's a startup called Alfred. Um, they recently won the TechCrunch Disrupt 2014 uh, competition, and uh, essentially uh, the way that Alfred works is you you book, um, I don't know if I want to call it a butler, but I guess that's what they're going for, right, with the mm-hmm. Alfred title, oh, yeah. um, someone who will take care of all your grocery shopping, take care of your laundry, your dry cleaning, um, not just kind of take care of it, but actually like 
go to your home, put everything away in your fridge, put all your clothes away in your drawers for you. Um, they can take care of other things like shoe repair. Do or, they pick up AV equipment? <laughs> <laughs> possibly you could arrange something like I'm that. In. They can you know, pick up and drop off mail, like all those kind of little jobs that have to be done all the time. But, um, you know, if you're a busy professional, maybe you'd, you'd prefer somebody else to kind of come in and do that. So um, you can pay uh, what looks to be a, a relatively reasonable rate. I think the starting cost is $25 a week, and it kind of goes up from there, you know, depending on how much you want them to do. And uh, it's all kind of done through through an app uh, to arrange it. Uh, I'm assuming you got to hand off a copy of your house key to somebody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, the, in the demo, they mm-hmm. show that you can take a picture of your house key, and I guess that's enough for them to, to make a copy, which is kind of cool. That's it's and cool, scary. but also spooky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Because I could take a picture. Theory, somebody your, yeah. puts their keys on the table. I can take a snapshot and get into their. their you house could with their you car could prank them so bad by having their laundry done and their groceries <laughs> done for them. <laughs> right. Dinner's ready. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't see that coming. Um, so that's that's kind of one thing that's on the table here. And then we also have another one called Fetch, um, and Fetch is once again is uh, uh, something that's I believe come through. Oh, it was on TechCrunch. Maybe it wasn't that disrupt, but uh, um, this serves me right for not having reread the article before we start recording mm-hmm. again. But um, Fetch is kind of the same same idea, personal assistant, but um, it's personal assistant for things that you would take care of online mostly. So um, this is something like uh, if, if you're making regular purchases online, you want someone to help you find the best deals and um, take care of all the purchasing stuff for you. Um, if you want them to purchase uh, flights, hotels, rental cars, movie tickets, um, tickets to events, you know, send flowers to people on a regular basis, uh, pay off your parking tickets, pretty much any task that you could try to accomplish online. Um, Fetch will have a real human being on the other side of the app who will take care of that stuff for you. And once again, you pay them. Uh, well, actually, I shouldn't say you pay them a fee. The way it's it's being mm-hmm. used right now is it's free. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then they take their fees from uh, kind of affiliate um, arrangements with the mm-hmm. businesses that... Uh, that they're doing business with on your behalf. So uh, very interesting kind of business setup. I think at some point in the future, they're going to have to incorporate a, you know, a, a more structured fee structure in, into the way things work just to keep on top of things. But um, that sounds really smart anyway. though. Whereas Alfred is sort of a personal assistant for everything. Fetch has zeroed in on the money and said, mm-hmm. we're not going to help you with downloads or with uh, checking your calendar or the weather. Mm-hmm. But when you want to buy something, mm-hmm. there will help you, you know, so right. that's a really smart idea to, you know, we're going to help you with your online purchases, whatever that is. Yeah, right? and, and a bit of a better entry price point wise, right? I mean, f- free yeah. <laughs> uh, or free to you um, versus, you know, at least a $25 a week uh, thing for Alfred. So mm-hmm. um, so let me throw this out here first. Like, first of all, could you guys see yourselves using uh, a service like either Alfred or Fetch or both? As successful uh, entrepreneurs. Yeah. <laughs> Busy. Yeah. So my... my uh, my take on both of them changed over time, but but was was kind of the gut level feeling was different. Right. Alfred, I was I was intrigued, but I, I you know I, I had to be won over. By the end, I was like, this is really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Fetch, my immediate feeling was, oh, that feels that feels kind of weird. That like it's not that hard, and I actually kind of enjoy the purchasing process once I've decided to buy something. Sure. Uh, and by the end, I was maybe a little more won over, but it, it seemed much less compelling to me. Hmm. I, the, the thing with Alfred was uh, I love that they focus on this automatic versus on demand. Hmm. They, they made a big distinction about that, right? So there's yeah. they're kind of layered on top of these services that are on demand. You can get uh, Washio to do your wash. You can yeah. uh, get HomeJoy to do your cleaning. But right. those are, you press a button, kind of Uber style, to, to bring that to you. Right. Whereas they talk about kind of the the mental capacity that you regain when you don't have to be thinking about, oh, right, I didn't book the home jo- joy cleaning and so now my apartment's falling apart or there's no milk in my fridge because I forgot to schedule it. Right. That they actually are learning and anticipating your need and mm. you just, like a good butler, you don't have to think about it unless you need to course correct them and say, actually, you kind of screwed this up. I need this different or sure. I have a special concern. Oh, I'm That's planning a party and I need you know yeah. more uh, ice or whatever, right? Right. But uh, yeah, it's, it's true. I, I think part of the, the pitch, the marketing pitch is you just kind of set up the service and then let it run and, yeah. and forget about it, right? Uh, which is cool. 
That's funny uh, that you yeah. mentioned that like when you make a, like I have an appointment for a medical thing that I had uh, canceled by the doctor and they just left a message on my machine to say, we've rebooked you for this day. Mm -hmm. So I have, and that wasn't going to work for me. So it's a couple weeks away and it's just taking up mental space. And yeah. I think, Oh, I have to do it. So I had mm -hmm. a post-it note on the wall and it fell behind my desk <laughs> and I was like, and I, it's not a movable desk. Right. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I am never going to get that phone number. And if I don't write it down right this second, like it's going to be that day and I'm going to be, why are, you know, where are you? So yeah. uh, I didn't write it down, but then today I had a little bit of mental space. So I <laughs> actually called and when I hung up the phone, I had an immediate uh, feeling of satisfaction of not making an appointment for a doctor, but just clearing the mental space again, Absolutely. right? Like it was yeah, like right. chucking something off. I was like, thank God I remembered that and I'm so yeah. glad it's done and I've written it down and it's off my radar now. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so that bit of the get it, getting things done philosophy where there's certain things where you just want to get them off your list because they're quick to do and then you don't have to worry about them. Right. Yeah, and I've true. only got a 900 terabyte hard drive up here. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> there's not a lot of space. I to pointed spare. at my head. Well, <laughs> well I was actually the other right. way. The other way. It's funny because Chris and I talked about it and we kind of had different opinions. Uh, I think I'm the youngest person in the room here. But Alfred to it's me. Seemed, of weeks maybe. Yeah, maybe a couple <laughs> of weeks. But uh, uh -huh. Alfred to me seemed like a, a real kind of weird invasion of privacy. Privacy. I don't know if I trust like a third party, like what are their, you know, they say, oh, well, we do our own credential checks of everyone. And, and so now you got to say, okay, in my region, is that supported? Does that include a police check, all these things? And sure. you think I'd be more open to that, but really I, I barely even like banks when they, uh, auto take uh, the bills off I like to pay sure. everything and be in control of that yeah so Alfred kind of threw me off for the sense of like you don't have that control whereas yeah. fetch was kind of cool because um you don't you didn't need to plan things you didn't need to find stuff but you're like oh I love I love that phone or I really like your laptop you take a picture of it and you're like I want to buy this laptop and they find what you took a picture of right and yeah. find you the best price and offer a guarantee that if you can find a lower price they'll refund the difference and to me that seems a lot more geared to I guess my personality of wanting to stay in control of those things right yeah to think when I was gone all day that there's like someone that I actually haven't met who has a key to my house that's going well, through you, my drawers to put you my could clothes away. Them. It's just not comfortable yeah. for me. You could stay home and meet them at some point. Sure you could. At, yeah, yeah. At first at least. Mm -hmm. But I but know it's you like, I met the guy once and he's still going through my underwear drawer. <laughs> you, know, that's a great day. you know, when um, uh, my wife and I lived overseas for about five years, uh, we were in the Middle East and we were making big money and we, we could afford to hire somebody to come and do our cleaning, which incidentally... I think might have saved our marriage because I think 90% of the fights we had were about like whose turn it was to clean the bathroom or whatever. Yeah, you weren't folding um, the towels the right way. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that can get messed up that way. But, um, <laughs> but we, you know, we were able to bring somebody in once a week to kind of take care of all of those jobs. I still did my own grocery shopping, but, uh, you know, take care of a lot of that stuff. And, and then when we had our, uh, our son overseas, we had a nanny who, who did take care of, uh, you know, all of the cooking and cleaning. Um, while she was there during the day, as well as all of the laundry, and it was it was awesome. It was a big adjustment mm -hmm. coming back to Canada and having to do it all ourselves. But it did feel very awkward at the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Having having a, a virtual stranger in your house, and especially when it was just somebody who came once a week, like our original cleaner did. Like we felt really, really weird, kind of sitting watching a TV show while he's kind of vacuuming and tidying up around right. us or something. We had, we actually had to like get out and just like go to the mall or something. Yeah. That was, was going to be done, my question right? is what did you yeah. do with that time? Was it like effective for we, you or like for me, it's, it's mental space right now as a student. Yeah. I'm getting crammed. So it's not as much time. So, uh, it's the mental space of not having to remember sure. dishwasher, laundry, walk the dog, feed the children three times a day, which I think is ridiculous. <laughs> you know? uh, so yeah, freeing Only up all three? that to do list. Yeah. Uh, you're what are you? Oh, at two or? I've, I've got a six, three and, and three month year old. Yeah. Um, oh, so six, full house. six years, three years. Uh, yeah. The three month year old is snacking constantly. You know, right. like always asking for a snack. Yeah. And of course, the three month year old, you know, is a three month old is eating yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I would crazy. do it three months though. It's yeah. a different food delivery right. system. Yes. Right? So you, yeah. got a, you got a lot of mass to develop, right? <laughs> sure. three months. You got a whole, yeah. Double your your body weight every uh, so many months at that right. point. Well, and uh, as a yeah. as an entrepreneur, I wonder with it with a service like like Alfred, like I think I would be terrified every day just waiting for the the one time that uh, one of the personal assistants did something inappropriate right. with access to somebody's house, property, or information. And I yeah. feel like that's like you're, you're treading a very careful line there, and yeah. somebody's got to do it. And apparently, they they have a method for it, but it's not something I think I you would just take. Bundle it with uh, yeah. Rogers home <laughs> monitoring system. On, on the entrepreneurial tech side, I find. I find Alfred the most 
intriguing of all the business models, right? It's, I, it's interesting, but I would be afraid of the liability concerns. Like you said, I would be afraid if even if that the cleaner accidentally kind of knocks over a, a vase a or something, vase. right? Or and and suddenly like you have to somehow make that right yeah. as the company. I, I don't know. I, I, I think I think it. for for the you know the truly innovative changes you you have to have people who push past that right like i i would look to airbnb as being hmm. you know a massively impactful business that you know they would have had much more than that of people saying you know this is ridiculous to consider letting that you're mm-hmm. going to get in the middle of people going into other people's <laughs> right. houses like you're yeah. you're right. setting yourself up for a world of hurt yeah. and, uh, done it. and you had they had to have the kind of the That's conviction true. and to sure. go for it and now, so I look with admiration for people who are able to say, you know, I think we'll take that on. Like, I think we can do that. We, we can say that, you know, looking at Airbnb, they're obviously enjoying a certain modicum <laughs> of success. <laughs> but at the same time, like, we don't know what it's like to be in the seat of the people mm. who are taking care of those issues. Like, maybe they're stressed out beyond belief <laughs> all day, every day. It's, um, yeah. You can have success, but you can have you know success with stress that uh, virtually kills you too. Right. Um, something I wanted to throw into the mix here, um, when I was looking at Alfred, I came across another article uh, on Slate.com titled Silicon Valley is Officially Run Out of Ideas. And they're actually using Alfred as their example to say, mm. um, here's a service that's ridiculous <laughs> mm. to be offered. You're, you're, their argument is you're essentially taking... Uh, low wage servanthood mm. and trying to kind of appify it mm. um, and you know paying somebody much much less than you than they probably should be getting paid and uh, uh, rather than you know hiring somebody yourself because you can go out and, and through a service get somebody once a week to come and clean your house and do different things right yeah. um, for for a much you know, more competitive kind of price from from the uh, point of view of the person doing the work. Uh, I don't I don't know yeah. how the numbers work out. Right. That would be very interesting to see. The as part of their pitch, they they claim that what comes is the efficiency of of scale. Right. So right. so they'll get they'll concentrate on a neighborhood or a building actually. So it'll be a condo unit that they'll get a whole bunch of Alfred customers, and so one you know they're calling them Alfreds. One Alfred goes and mm-hmm. picks up everybody's laundry delivers it all at once, goes and delivers it all back, you right. know, that is going to allow you to, you know, pay a much smaller co- piece of that cost than you would if you were hiring one person just to do your stuff. Sure. I don't know what the, pre- you know, these things come up with something like Uber, right? Where there's definitely some tension between the company and the customers and the drivers, right? So right, I right. wonder what, yeah, anytime you're doing this, you're going to need to be doing right by all sides of Sure. Okay. The and, equation. And they're an early, you know, stage startup themselves anyway. So I think some of those things might be getting worked out as they go sure. along. It's almost too, like a, right? an but, Angie's list that they're crowd sourcing. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? So I, I'm just thinking if at twenty five dollars a week for the minimum thing, if if the minimum thing they can do for me is you know, buy a few groceries for me each week, like my milk and bread or whatever I regularly cycle through. That's that's still, you know, travel time to the grocery store, the time to purchase the items, um, bring the items back, put them into your place. Like if that takes any more than an hour or an hour and a half to kind of take care of that stuff, that's... Might as well do it yourself. You, well, the, and they're already like whatever they're making is coming out of that $25 plus a piece of that has to go to the company, right? So... Mm-hmm. Economically, I don't know. I don't know. If they can make that's it work, the interesting excellent. thing on the tech yeah. side, right? So the tech side is has two interesting problems. One of them is you know a classic scheduling job mm-hmm. scheduling kind of thing where you only send them to the grocery store with you know to shop for fifteen people, right? And so they get fifteen people shopping done in one trip, and then sure. go and do the deliveries for the next couple hours on that. Sure. Um, so that's interesting, and and. If, kind of balancing that the other one that's really interesting to me is the learning stuff right so they're i don't know how good they are at it yet but they you know they they kind of promise to learn oh you didn't go through your milk so we don't need to go you know we don't need to buy as much or we need to buy Mm. more right i mean that's that's an intriguing piece of technology too i think Mm -hmm. that's true that's true well yeah if like i said if they can make it work great i guess it's still an experiment in progress so Hopefully we'll hear I love something experiments. down the road. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's the way you learn, <laughs> right? Um, let's, uh, let's move on here. So the other two articles that uh, seem to kind of go together here, um, both of these uh, based around the idea of animated uh, GIF files. Do you guys say GIF or GIF? I say GIF, but... I you say GIF? GIF. I do too, yeah. GIF. You guys all say GIF and yeah. I say yeah. GIF? Well, GIF, like Jiffy Lube, would start with a J, right? Yeah. 
Huh, but you know, yeah, and usually when you have a G yeah. followed by an I, although I guess in the word gift, it's gi- right. You can be different. That's fine. I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, it's I'm, it's I'm not gift. I'm it's gonna. Gift. S- I'll say gift <laughs> for the sake of uh, you know. I'm, I'm with usually the rest not of the opinionated about these things. Yeah. I choose what rolls off the tongue, and I don't feel silly saying. And I feel silly saying GIF, and so I say GIF. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Let's talk about animated GIFs here. So uh, yeah, two uh, two other startups here that are um, you know playing with the world of animated GIF files. Uh, one of them called Pop Key. Um, it has made an alternate keyboard. You, know, you guys know now with the uh, new version of iOS, they're mm-hmm. allowing finally uh, alternate mm-hmm. keyboards to be used. Um, Android users have had it for several years, and yep. iOS is finally catching up. Mm-hmm. So I can do um, my slidey text thing. Yes, you can do that. Well, Looking that's it. It, hopefully they'll make swipe for, uh, mm-hmm. for, swipe iOS, for iOS. I think. Yep. But um, but PopKey, what they're offering is a keyboard that has no letters whatsoever, <laughs> only animated GIFs. That uh, that you can send to your friends as part of a text message conversation, or I'm I'm supposing in any application where uh, you know you would typically use a keyboard and where you're able to send an animated GIF file, then this will enable you to do that. Yeah, and chimps and, and orangutans easily, right? around the world are lining up already. For this. <laughs> Very excited about it. There you go. <laughs> Lot to say. <laughs> um, and and you know it's it is a popular you know thing to to send animated gifts occasionally to spice up a conversation. Um, I, they're just saving you, I think, a, a bunch of cut and paste kind of button presses um, in order to make that an easier process. Um, the other one that's uh, on board here with the animated GIF. Um, world. Okay, is, what's the pronunciation coming on this one? <laughs> I'm going to say photo. P H H H O T O. Even the article admits that it's a poorly named app, but uh, apparently. A photo. <laughs> Oto. Photo. Does this mean the, 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 the one, the domain with two H's was already taken? They just kept adding H's until they, I, until I they guess. found one. <laughs> I guess. Might as well put a 555 in it. <laughs> Hollywood they, phone number. May, maybe they should have added more O's instead of H's, right? Photo. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's annoying the, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, one way or the other, uh, photo. Um, is is essentially a quick and easy way to take uh, to create animated GIF files of your own. Um, I think it just snaps four quick pictures in succession and animates them, and uh, and now you can you know post them or send them to friends or whatever you want to do. Post with them. a Vine or something like that. That's right. Um, kind of like a very. Po- Poor man's vine, I suppose. <laughs> Instead of six seconds of video, you're getting four frames, mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's it. Put into a GIF file. Might be like Twitter. That's all you need. <laughs> it might we be. We never actually. knew. That's true. <laughs> um, uh, apparently, uh, they've been getting. Um, it, it looks like at least two hundred thousand people um, are already using photo uh, for for Good creating insight. and sending uh, animated gifts. So they seem to be gaining some some good traction. Um, so I don't know. First of all, I've I myself have never sent an animated gift mm-hmm. a gif. Sorry, as as part of a conversation. Not that I you know a I guess I just don't figure I, I don't feel like figuring out how to. I, I know it can't be that hard. But uh, but B. Um, I, I've never really felt the need to, but I don't know. I've, do you guys, is this part of your regular kind of mobile communication repertoire? It's not. It's no. not for me either. <laughs> uh, yeah, Can't say I, that I, I've ever sent one or had the desire to, to send a GIF either. Well, you no? guys are really missing out because I, I used one just yesterday in really? my uh, pitch for a teammate, and it was a Chewbacca GIF, Whoa. and he was putting his hands back over his head and relaxing. Oh, yes. I remember points, that from uh, the movie. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to work smarter and not harder, so uh, uh, that was our team. And, and, uh, so I used yeah. the Chewbacca GIF. Everybody so, should sure. use so it. So tell me how, you, how did you go about making it was just in a PowerPoint happen. presentation, so it was. Just, oh, you uh, used it in a PowerPoint. Yeah, you didn't so it wasn't, send it through uh, your phone. Wise, no. So, uh, have you ever sent a, an animated gift as part a gif? Sorry, a um, gift. The only ones are more the, the emoticons. I've okay. never done an animated gif through the phone. Although Facebook now has the Messenger, Facebook Messenger. So I might have really, if I look closely, I probably have sent. Yeah. Um, because with the the young guys and girls. Um, you can a picture is worth a thousand words, that's so what they say. four frames is like four thousand words. So that's, <laughs> theory, it's very effective. Sure. Yeah. So um, sometimes, yeah, somebody will post something, especially on Facebook. I'm doing it a lot now on Facebook. Yeah. Somebody will post a thing, and they'll say blah 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 blah, and then I'll just, you know, a gift a picture. can say what my opinion is without, sure. you know, and it yeah. says it in a funny way, which I'm a big fan of. Well, yeah. here's here's what I'm wondering: is this a generational thing? I mean, most mm. of us here are not. 
you know, young, young, young guys. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. I, I shouldn't speak for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you guys look I'm younger not. than me. Yeah. <laughs> but you have three kids. So, yes. you know, I got no kids. I'm, I'm okay. 25. So you're 25. So it, for still, me, for no? me, I, I feel like it's more of a kind of like the emoticons. I think you hit it on the head with that. It seems more like a fad in, in that sort of way. But right. um, will it replace traditional keyboards? I'm, I'm guessing no. Right. Um, but I mean, for that, that target audience that they're working with, they're, mm-hmm. they're heavy smartphone users, heavy apps users and i'm sure it'll be successful what i really liked about photo Uh was the fact that they actually started with uh this photo pro thing and it was a physical piece of hardware and and i really like when when uh the apps come in in with the hardware support right Mm. and so what they would do is actually rent out this unit which was the photo pro at special events exactly and it would take it and share it instantly up on uh basically like the big screen and show everybody that that they were doing is like a red carpet way Uh to uh to yeah. promote what was going on there. And, sure. and there's, there's even another startup over on the other side here called uh, Event Peaks that okay. highlights all the different parts of an event and aggregates it all into one thing. So you get to see the vines uh-huh. and the photos. I've and seen that. I think they use them sometimes. Communitech they do. Communitech uses yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, something like this would be perfect to, to add on to that. And, and I think for me, the experience would be more linked to an event right. than linked to a, a messenger conversation. But right. I mean, they, they're clearly popular. Sure. Very cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I could see making use of something like um, like pop key uh, now I don't have an iOS phone but if I did if if I could use my traditional keyboard for sending the messages and then you know just swipe say a single mm-hmm. swipe over to bring up that other keyboard right. to access my animated gifs and yeah. then swipe back to the key- like I know on my Android phone if I want to switch between keyboards it does take a few other steps I got to mm-hmm. pull down from the menu I got to select alternate keyboards I got to pick the keyboard I want hit okay go back to my conversation it seemed like it was even more cumbersome on iOS like the yeah. to get to the keyboard selection was was involved and uh, and that, right. that it wasn't even just pressing the key you you kind of pressed the the key which copied it to the clipboard and, and then, then you had to paste, to paste it, it manually and, yeah you know I, right. I, just platform limitations that you usually have with iOS but right it it seems like they can't get all the way there to I just really want to you know yeah. put, put uh, swipe put over a picture to my of Chewbacca and, in, in the stream yeah. yeah and and maybe that's why emoticons seem to be in in more regular use because they're already kind of integrated into what we're already using for typing for the most part right I can I know I, I can just do a press and hold on one of my keys to bring up my emoticons uh, when I'm typing a message and and it's easy. It's two button presses, and yeah, it's like a, you should be able to hold your space bar and get your different keyboard options up. Too. I maybe I'm using like a, a version of swipe that uh, it's it's one of the other keys. But yes, oh, okay, there's, right, there right. there are a few options to uh, to access them. But it's fast and it's easy. I don't yeah. have to hunt through menu systems and change to other yeah. keyboards, right? And I don't know if I want to have an entire conversation in animated GIFs. I, I think I just want to kind of sprinkle an existing conversation with them here and there, right? So, and it's not creative. It's like a, it's a populated list. So here's right. 10 more emotions you can convey. And then the world of GIFs is sort of opening that up to, well, here's 10,000 that the internet has done, mm-hmm. you know? Know, put pictures and words together or whatever it is so sure. um, and now you can create your own so um, I can see there is a need for it because instead of having just the smiley face with the sunglasses now I want to have the smiley face with the Prada sun or whatever I've made right so right. Yeah. Um, I think the internet is huge on self-expression that's why mm-hmm. Facebook is blowing up mm-hmm. so if you can yeah. do your own little smiley face with a Clearwater Beach because I went there last weekend and a <laughs> Uh, so, you know, or whatever it is, like so you can personalize it. I think yeah. that'll be big. So they're as, gonna have to figure that out. I think. Yeah. As fun fun as it is for us to to do our takes on these for whether we would use them personally, I, I found like when doing startup analysis, where I'm always wrong about what's going to be. <laughs> you know, the, the market speaks differently. Right. Uh, and so to me, it's interesting that. Um, now I don't know what how Popkey's doing so far, but Photo, you know, seems to have validated in a few ways. You had people who yeah. were willing to pay a lot of money for a physical thing for it. Yep. They kind of validated that and then went to an app, and that seems to get a validation of usage. Yeah, and, there, and there's two pieces to it, right? Is it something that people will use and meets a need? Yep. And is there a way to capture some of the value of that, right? So some get the get the usage but fail to capture anything from it. Yep. What's what's interesting? I don't I don't know if the photo revealed how they would do it. Um, Popkey, it is 
there's there's potential there. They're they're talking about this kind of marketplace where maybe you pay ten cents to get this thing that you want to put into your conversation. And I could see right. that you know at or, the right or, pri- price point, you're like, oh, I really want to just put. Or this you in. buy a set, right? Here's or, here's yeah. ten or fifteen more animated gifts that uh, you can assert into conversation. I wonder if right? they'll be licensing things for that. But in any case, I it seems know. like there's 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 people. Potentially a capturing piece there. There's definitely a validation piece on the other one. Right. You need to see both together before you know well, whether it's going to last. You know, this right. was my point. I think the ideal app would be something where I could t- I could create my own gifts and then have them imported right there. So when I'm having mm. my conversations, boop boop boop. I don't have to switch between apps. I don't have to switch between keyboards. Um, it's it's just another screen on my uh, keyboard, right? Um, so here's the, here our typical disclaimer. If anybody comes up with that and makes it work, <laughs> I want my twenty percent equity <laughs> in the app. And I'll uh, I'll yeah. just let you borrow the Chewbacca costume. I yeah. won't rent it to you. Okay, right? perfect. You're ready to make those gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Sounds great. Um, all right. So animated gifts. Uh, yeah, maybe one day we'll find ourselves trying them out. But for the for the most part, not, not messages quite yet. from the grandkids. Yes. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, right. There we go. Um, right. Made a podcast. <laughs> Incidentally, it's interesting that like back in the early, early, early days of the internet, it was all kind of there was JPEG and there was GIF, and the animated GIFs were like that really crappy kind of clip arty animation mm-hmm. that you'd find on someone's MySpace page or, mm-hmm. or something, right? Yeah, a lot of and turtles. and now it's it's kind of come full circle, and uh, you know people are making whole apps based around them. It's, I find it really interesting. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's uh, let's move on from the world of uh, tech articles and talk to the people we have in front of us here. Yay. Um, Chris Braun and Corey Schner, you guys are both uh, with Happenate mm-hmm. now. I've I've read a little bit about what you guys do. I visited your website. Um, it looked very cool, but uh, I think it would be best if maybe if we let you guys tell us uh, what Happening is all about. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we provide uh, team experiences and team rewards for mm-hmm. workplace teams, mm-hmm. ways to fuel uh, the culture on a team. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and to to kind of drive that that sense of we are a team working together that likes working together we do more than just uh, our productivity stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it it's really came out of uh, for me out of an experience of working in a number of different uh, cultures corporately and and mm. being a team leader mm-hmm. and realizing that. A few things that I had taken for granted early in my career by being part of these amazing team cultures aren't yep. present everywhere. And that <laughs> especially as uh, some of the pressures of an organization come to bear and you get larger organizations, you end up with a manager who you know everyone's looking to to set the culture for the team, to make things happen, to, to create the awesome place to work for. But and everything about your job makes it really hard for you to take that role. Mm. Um, you're just It's not what anybody is asking you to do, except for when someone leaves the team, mm. uh, except for when morale's low, you know, mm. you'll get asked about it. But it's not like you're getting a part of your day carved out to spend talking about or thinking about how am I going to drive a uh, great, fantastic team culture. And right. so um, started most, experimenting, uh, you know, yeah. uh, with the team, but thought I, I could be much better supported. There could be better tools to let me do my my role that I'm hired for, as well as allowing the team to to build its own culture and, and drive uh, the kinds of things they're doing. So mm. really practically, we do that through uh, helping the team choose team experiences together and sure. do them. So that's everything from bringing something into the office might mm. be, uh, you know, getting block three brewing and Elmira to come in with a keg and have something on a Friday afternoon sure. or, um, you know, having a whole lot of, uh, or having gelato in the office or something like that mm-hmm. to going out to do something, a cooking class, rock climbing, paintball, um, mm-hmm. something like that outside of the office. So, so walk me through a scenario then if I'm, you know, Joe, uh, team member, um, not necessarily the manager. I'm, I'm just an employee. I'm working with a group of four or five other developers. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah. um, I, I come into work, I sit down at my computer. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you get me more engaged with the rest of my team? Yeah. So you, <laughs> you get, you get a, a wonderful email saying you're, you know, whether it uses this language or not, your employer loves you. They've given uh-huh. your team some points <laughs> and they want you to go out and do something fantastic together. You know, okay. come in, come in and tell us what you'd like to see. Okay. And then Pinterest style, you're seeing all these different experiences, things that you could do, and you're just saying, plus me, I'd, I'd do that. Oh, rock climbing. Oh, wow, that's really unique. I would do that. Okay. You simply do that. So there's a large list of potential activities yep. or events, and I can 
click on the ones that I like. Yeah. And and we, and okay. they we have a little yeah, plus yeah. plus me button. So Facebook's okay. got the like. There's the tweet and the retweet. Yeah. Ours is plus me. It's like it's it's the simple voting up method, right? Vote okay. up, vote down. Mm-hmm. So you're crowdsourcing the ideas of what you want to do. Sure. One of the things I like to explain to people is basically you turn your whole company or your whole team into a social committee. Right. So you don't need a couple of people making the decisions on okay, well it'd be fun for the group to do. Yeah. You, you bring it out to the whole team and say, look, here's here's some options. Here's our budget. Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and let's let's pick what we want to do as a group and then that way you get that cohesion and even the people who uh, voted and their choice wasn't picked are still a lot happier with the choice because they were part of the decision process sure now the choices that are presented then are these kind of um, pre-made packages or are, are, are these are, uh, you know preset arrangements with certain businesses that are local that they can buy into or are they, is it just like a list of events and then they have to work that out afterwards or how does that work yeah so we've got a marketplace that includes uh, specific experiences from vendors that are going to use points that, that the, the company has bought to use them or okay. to, to book them, uh, as well as do-it-yourself activities, okay. which are kind of guides, how-tos, where you, uh, like you know, go on a hike goals. or... Totally, or, you know, doing or Office Place know. Olympics or something <laughs> like that, right? Okay. Well, I, like, I always kind yeah. of explain that part, like like uh, <laughs> like going on a date. Like you could go on a nice, expensive date to a fancy restaurant or you could go for a walk on the beach. Both right. really great experiences. One costs, one doesn't. And you have to be able to do both and blend that mm. to get that ongoing relationship building, right? Sure. And it's the same sort of thing in the workplace. So not every time do you have to spend a whole bunch of money and take the team out to something really rich. You can do some of the DIY activities and sort of crowdsource that that fun social atmosphere within the organization and not pay a whole bunch more every time you want to do something. Sure. And so, it could it could be that the team members want to do the cheap stuff anyway, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so why, mm-hmm. why do something expensive and force it on them if that's not what they want mm-hmm. to do? Sorry, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of the team building. And like I said at the beginning, it's awesome time right now because we've just formed new teams and it's new idea generation mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But what, what do you guys do? Um, because I understand what you're saying, but on the deeper level, like other than us just going out and hanging out together outside of the office, um, are you guys giving any directions sociology wise, psychology wise? Are we uh, trading up leaders? Are we expanding our boundaries? Are mm-hmm. we doing trust exercises? Or right. are we, you know, is there any focus to these paintballing uh, or uh, <laughs> excursions? Or, or throw people together and let them make the, the magic happen. Yeah, is it, it is a, it putting is a, a team bit, together, it, get them over the wall. It kind is of a stuff? bit more of the mm-hmm. latter. Uh, yeah. We, we want to have a light hand on. Um, on what this feels like. There are so many things inside the organization that are very directed to, this is professional development for this. Right. And that's that's kind of where we draw the line on experiences. We're not about professional development. We are about the culture building, the getting to know your teammates as, as other human beings that you get to relate to. Sure. Um, there's a lot of research that says that without that explicit um, kind of agenda on it, that simply feeling like you have a strong sense of community with your coworkers is going to make you uh, like four times more engaged in the job you do, have twice mm. the job satisfaction. Like just by liking the people you're working with, you're going to do a better job and stay at your job more. Sure. And so we kind of want to do that without messing with it and adding all these layers that make it feel lame or feel like, oh, I'm obligated to go. And all of a sudden, you know, you engage the whole experience in a different way. Sure. And, you know, yeah. there is some psychology behind the idea of doing a, a common activity together. Together, mm-hmm. makes you feel more closely bonded to people they say you know at uh, sports games when they make everyone stand up <laughs> for the national anthem or or actually if this is even weirder if you sing a song with somebody else you you feel like you are friends with that person even if you know there's nothing else in common between you but you just happen to yeah, sing the same song okay. when we get back to our yeah. desks we're going to create a, a sing a song together in the sing office song, everybody stand up at your yeah. cubicle <laughs> and office sing along there you go so that's really neat that you've identified something because one of uh, my experiences in startups was we we got away from it and you're you're able to stay to that so you're mm-hmm. saying look i want to put them into the same space yes. and that's it and it would be very hard for me um as a control person to say i'm stopping there because i would want uh, to say to the introverts okay so here's a little structure you know but i totally <laughs> get that what if you're going to canada's wonderland with uh, Thalmic Labs, and mm-hmm. you show up and you have an awesome day, it's great. But if you show up and you have to put on a Hi, My Name is Steven yeah. sticker yeah. and start into that Jump sort of car- corporate you know, yeah. path, 
Yeah. The whole experience can be shot. So I, I yeah. applaud you for identifying yeah. that and being able to stay and, you know, whoop, keep, keep the rest out, right? And <laughs> right. not form it too, too finely. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the, some of the yeah. vendors that we have do offer some experiences that are a little bit more in that team building fashion. Sure. So where they have something where you couldn't get as a typical customer coming in off the street, you'd have to come in with a group where there's like a trust exercise or a challenge or a duel or something yeah. like that, that yeah. creates that camaraderie and, and at the same time, like light competitiveness. Right. Sure. So that, that helps with, yeah. with a lot of what you're saying. If you're doing yeah. rock so climbing structured. or something where you have to support one another to get up the rock or whatever. Right. That's one yeah. of them, yeah. yeah. Is it? Oh, yeah. see? Yeah, yeah. 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 We're going to break into teams and it's uh, the manager is up and you're holding or reverse <laughs> roles or all that kind of, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, and so by by looking through the packages as your employee, as, as a workplace team and yeah. voting up what you want to do, you sort of crowdsource how much of that do you want, you know, how much team building activity do you want versus how much mm -hmm. free form stuff. Oh, so the, right. the team then, if they desire that, could vote that up and then that would be off. Yes. Right. So that's great. If and that's, the, like that's that. the flip side to your question. The place where we do get really actively involved is in the dynamics of engaging the whole team in coming up with the idea that they're going to do, doing it together, uh, celebrating, you know, posting what they've done, uh, mm. drawing out the introverts, balancing the extroverts. What, what happens so typically is that you fall into a few structures. So you might start with a small company where, you know, the founder does everything and just people come. Yep. Yeah. Then, you know, you might grow a bit bigger and, and uh, maybe you don't add structure. And then what you have is you have kind of maybe an email list where two people participate and everybody else just lurks and, and follows along and they have opinions, but don't feel like they can express them. Right. Or you formalize and you get the social committee, which uh, often means that you are pulling a whole bunch of people out of, you know, they originally they're say, saying, oh, I'm really interested in the social stuff. And then they end up in a room like this, yeah. sitting around a table going, this isn't fun at all. And right. people don't like what we're coming up with. And why did I sign up? for this right. yeah um yeah we, whereas we offer uh, uh the technology what it does is it provides a few game mechanics where everybody gets their input yeah uh, you're kind of getting your little piece in without bothering anybody there's not this big reply all email chain it's just like uh yeah. darren you know would you want to do these things which dates work for you what's your preference you sure. put it in and you know that what comes out at the end is something that represents something that you're excited about happening and had some right. input in yeah, yeah. Or, or at the very least it, it represents what the rest of the team is excited about i right. i might choose like group <laughs> mud wrestling every time and yeah. nobody else wants to do it but yeah. you know jeff I, jeff creations yeah <laughs> or whatever but i'll happily go bowling or, or do whatever instead well, because and sort of into into that social aspect that you were talking about sociology and how how groups behave Mm -hmm. there is that thing about social pressure and social cohesion right so if a social committee sends you that chain email it says here's the big barbecue you can come you're like oh nobody's even gonna know i'm there maybe i'll grab a free hot dog right. but if you work with a system that's like you know steven and chris want, want you to come are you showing up yeah. there's all of a sudden this this closeness more like you're accountable and you're like somebody actually wants me to be there yeah if you so were that, the vote that got the chocolate cupcakes over the vanilla <laughs> right? you're gonna show up to see the chocolate totally. cupcakes you that you were involved Right? Yeah. yeah. So you can that nudge people in. to vote if they haven't voted. So yeah, you can be yeah. like, come on, take one for the team. Well, I need and, your vote. A committee to influence the committee. And well, not like only that. that, you know, people are actually going to show up if, you know, nine out of 12 people said that they want to do this thing. Hopefully mm -hmm. that means they're going to be there, right? Not like, like you said, if you throw a barbecue and maybe two people come out of, right. you know, your whole crowd, um, you, you know, you don't want to feel like a loser. <laughs> that's a lot of pulled pork. <laughs> yeah, that's right. true. <laughs> that's the plus side is you get all the pulled pork. Um, now, you mentioned in your description a few times this idea of points. I'm just yeah. wondering maybe you can explain a bit more of what's that about it. it it sounds to me, and tell me if I'm wrong, that um, you know companies will pay a certain amount of money for a certain amount of points, and then they decide how to distribute those points to the groups. And that's it, that's right? exactly it. Yeah. Gamification. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. The the they're almost they're almost more like uh, you know concession tickets at a midway or something like that, right? Something sure. where the company can buy them, uh, but that the teams can spend them however they want. Okay. So a virtual um, currency. Yeah. And with, with some control by the, the company. So the company can buy them and then decide, do we want to give them out to the team just at regular intervals, monthly, this is how much the team has to go and do stuff. Yep. Or do we want to give them on project milestones or on a work anniversary, you know, mm. a special occasion, say, hey, 
this is somebody's fifth year work anniversary. Here's a bunch of points. Go out and do something fun with the team. Yeah. Uh, or or this choose. particular group might be really overworked and getting dejected. Yeah. So we're going to have to let them do something fun. I think <laughs> there's fantastic up, right? or interesting yeah. things when you start to be able to track, you know, kind of engagement across the company and say, oh, I think we need to actually invest in this part of the company in a certain way. Sure. Now, that leads me to my next question. Is there a way through your system that you can track that level of engagement or or is there, do you, do you collect analytics kind of, I guess is a good way to put we, it? We, we track engagement in the process that we're doing. So okay. we know, you know, who, who is uh, viewing uh, participating, what ways are they participating, what parts get them more or less excited, what's what's the response after an activity. We're sure. doing that much. Um, uh, you know, another great company in town, Plasticity, is doing more measurement of kind of ongoing engagement and how our employees mm-hmm. doing with the, the kind of their whole experience, uh, experience yeah. as an individual. Right. And so those would, it would be really interesting to correlate the two, you know, how are people tracking as a team and how the team's functioning together with, hmm. with how's an individual doing? Um, yeah. Yeah. We're hoping to talk to it's, uh, Jim and Jim Jennifer Jen, Moss yeah. from, uh, De- definitely talk right? to them. They're fantastic um, people. I, I know them. I just haven't got around to asking them sure. the podcast, but we will uh, get them on at some point. But yeah, you never know. Maybe, uh, maybe at some point you guys can do some collaboration cause you kind of have both sides of the engagement uh, puzzle, I guess. Um, that you're able We're to We're definitely address, right? continuing to talk with them because, yeah. yeah, we like what they're doing. Very cool. Now, um, getting into not so much how Happenate works, but uh, mm-hmm. where it came from and how it got started, um, I, I think, Chris, uh, you're the founder or one of the founders, or how does that work? Well, T- tell us the story about how it came about. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So uh, it, it, had a, it had an evolution like so many startups. Um, yeah. Uh, Genesis was back when I was in Vancouver a couple of years ago. Uh, and for me, it was seeing a theme in a number of areas of my life. There mm. definitely was the workplace component, but that wasn't the only one. I was seeing the same thing in the neighborhood, you mm. know, organizing a block party for the first time, uh, political involvement, just a number mm. of areas where uh, it seemed like um, that technology was solving communication problems, particularly social networking was helping connect people sure. and that that was working well. And that some of the kind of on the ground connections that we used to have were were becoming less. So mm. we knew our neighbors less. We even knew our coworkers less, even though they, like we were around them every day, uh, right. and yet we were more connected to people virtually. Right. Right. So I, you know, at a very just it was a very broad existential kind of. I think that people are connecting online. I wonder if there's a way to use that to lead to more action because what I saw mm. in all that connective. Uh, connective social networking mm-hmm. was that it was mostly talk. It was mostly mm-hmm. geared towards because the, the technology had been designed for increasing page views, getting people to be kind of captive on the Facebook page and keep clicking for half an hour. They really only cared that you were going to be communicating a lot and digesting a lot, but mm-hmm. they didn't really care whether there was an outcome to it. Right. So, uh, Really, at the early stage, it was like, can we connect people online and get them to take collective action together? Can they come to consensus mm. and decide that? Um, and that part is still true. Uh, really, the part that has evolved over time has been which uh, which demographic is going to benefit from this the most. Sure. Uh, where is it going to catch? And uh, we spent some time doing a bunch of pilots and experiments in the consumer space. Mm-hmm. Um it was a lot of fun. I kind of I love that space, but it's much more disparate. It's it's a lot harder to kind of um, reach those customers and get you know everyone on board on one platform and to uh, mm. you know adopt it against other tools. Sure, it's um, funny because that's where everybody starts, right? Like it you know, is. You always it's think I want to use it, and totally. everybody. <laughs> and uh, we talk to so many startups, and they always go back to enterprise and back to business well, and back to you know away from the or customer, they, they the often, consumer. Yeah. Yeah, or they, they often, often do, yeah, they yeah. often, they yeah. often um, do, yeah, and so that's I. Funny. I to be honest, I resisted it for a time until the, you know, the dots got connected into my own mind, especially around my experience. And I kind of right. reflected on actually, you know what? Communities do all right. You know, there are mm. ways that they could do better, but they're doing all right. Workplace, on the other hand, could use a lot of help. You know, sure. I've been in these places where there just, there is no resources. There are no tools. And so if I was going to pick a place with greater impact, it would be the workplace because yep. Yep. people are spending their days there. I think it impacts you know, personal lives and personal psychology of people and the performance of, of businesses, Mm -hmm. uh, greatly. And, and, you know, starting to think through that, I got so excited about that space that I, I finally got to the place where I'm like, you know, it was, it was, uh, progressive at first. It was like, we'll do both. 
And then there was a, you know, there was a point <laughs> after, after Corey, Corey joined around transition time, but there was a yeah. point where I said, you know what? I like this workplace idea enough that let's shut down the other one. Cause it's going to be a distraction. And right. it took me a while sure. to get to that. Sure. Now, when you started, was it, was it you sitting down writing some code and, and trying to make this happen? <laughs> or did you have a, a team right from the start or yeah. how did that happen? Uh, again, evolutionary. So I was in Vancouver, but knew that I'd be coming back here. This is kind of a homeland for me sure. uh, and for my family. And so I knew that that was imminent. So yeah. I didn't want to add to my team in Vancouver. Uh, mm. I wasn't interested in a remote team at that point. Yeah. I was also new to entrepreneurship. I was even new to web development at that time. So right. I actually, at that point in my career, I was either going to go back to school or I was going to learn the same amount or more by starting a business. That's kind of how it started. Mm. Right. Trial by fire. Totally. <laughs> so started that way. Yeah. Um, had a few people partnering with me while I was uh, part time and working on the consumer side. Right. But at the point when it was this is going somewhere and I'm, you know, I'm going full time on this. We're going full fledged for it. Yeah. That clarified the role of, of some of the part time people involved and, uh, and Corey joined afterward, Chad, uh-huh. uh, afterwards, you know, started adding as, as soon as it had a clear direction, that was when it made sense to start building up the team. Right. Okay. And, and now we've mentioned Corey several times, yeah. but we haven't heard much about his story. So you've been, <laughs> how long have you been with Happenate now? Uh, since mm, April. Okay. April or May. April? Okay. Yeah, April. And, April. And what's it's April your... 1st because we made a joke about April Fool's Day. <laughs> oh, oh there you come go. Come in. I was like, am I actually here? Like, am I hired or is this a joke? <laughs> yeah. Should I go home? Have they told you yet? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm still, I'm waiting for next April for <laughs> a new record. Find out for sure. But. That's right, eh? And so, Corey, what's, what's your role in the mix here at uh, Business development. So, marketing, okay. sales, partnership, uh, developing our marketplace, working with our customers to, to continue to find out what... Uh, what they need and how we, how we can help service them the best. Um, okay. These are the geniuses behind the code and the software. I can't do oh. any of that. So I, <laughs> I stick to what I'm good at. Sure. Um, and, and I focus on that. And uh, I'm actually a Conestoga grad as well. So Woo-hoo. good, oh, to, see, go. good yep. to see some awesome. alumni. The yeah. Sun doors. Yeah. <laughs> and that there's what, less of us in this space is? than you think. Yeah. yeah. So Conestoga needs to, to stay hard and, and get into this, uh, into this tech space because it's very innovative and it's moving really fast. And so I've always been told now, the hard way is good to find. <laughs> When you say you're listen to this guy, when you say you're dealing with uh, a lot of customers, are you dealing with the corporate customers? Or are you dealing with? I guess that's what it is, right? Yeah. Uh, but there's also the vendors and stuff mm-hmm. as well. Are you part of those relationships yeah, also? Absolutely. The, the whole nine yards. Yep. Yeah? At this point, okay. yeah. yeah. Wow. So Corey yeah. and I are working together on the on the customer stuff. Corey's okay. been doing fantastic work there. But the market Chris sort of leads everything. The, the, <laughs> but the marketplace sure. has really like if you go to Happen Eight, you look at the activities. Everything that's up there is a conversation that the Corey has had. Been out there with the local. Mm vendors, you know, helped explain this new concept to them, get them excited about us sending them workplace teams. Wow. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a real clear indication of what he's accomplished by just seeing the great kind of activities that are up there that have all been him. Awesome. That's great. And now how big is the total team besides you two? There's three, there's three there's of us full time. One of the present. Wow. Yeah. You guys seem like you're, you're managing a whole lot with just three people, but uh, that's awesome, right? We're, we're, uh, that's, that's part of the startup challenge. Yeah. That's yeah. actually, I think the fun part is sure. being able to wear many hats. Jack of all trades. Yeah. 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 I think that that's what appealed to me the most. I mean, I met Chris at a, I had known a few other startups here and, and I have actually another business, a brick and mortar style one that I, I'm a part owner in. Yeah. Um, and then I heard about a talent collision event that was here. And actually, Chris's company was there along with like ten other companies. I'm like, I love what they're doing, and and so to be able to to wear those hats and have that role where you can take leadership and do other things, there's a really unique opportunity here hmm. uh, with startup culture. Whereas if you go to uh, somewhere else, entry level or mid senior or anything like that, you're you're part of a machine, which is great if that's what works for you. But my my personality likes to be able to to do many things and sort of have a little bit more of that creative input. Sure. So it was a perfect perfect match for me. I think I went. To that talent collision event, oh, actually, because yeah. I know I had heard about happening before right. we uh, talked here today, but that's very we're, interesting. We're doing it yeah. again in a few weeks. Oh, oh awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah shout out, get out yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, uh, here. Yeah, what's uh, the yes. Munitech, right? Yeah. What's the date? Do you know? Uh, 29th. 29th, okay. There I know because I just, uh, you know, figured out after the fact that that's uh, one of my son's birthdays. And so I'm gonna have to, I think I'm going to have to pitch and run that night and let yeah, uh, Corey and Chad I'll talk be there. to people after. I'll be there. <laughs> um, so do you guys have a lot of uh, like internal metrics for yourself or goals that you've set up for your company? We want to have a gazillion dollars in sales uh, or a Brazilian uh, customers or... A Brazilian. <laughs> Brazilian. There's a joke behind that. But yeah. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. A million years. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Uh-huh. Yes and no. Uh-huh. Um, the, I definitely, as I, as I talk with mentors and investors, there is 
uh, you know, different schools of thought. I maybe won't say old and new, but there is, you know, a school of thought where we project it all out for years. Yep. I, I find that less helpful uh, because mm. of so, you know, things have changed so many times that the time invested in those projections would have changed. Yeah. Um, that said, I think we struggle with, uh, you know, we need to, there are things that we need to achieve in order to accomplish the next learning goal. You know, the, sure. the, the, the phase of startup we're in is learning, right? Until right. we have a solid set of paying customers, then we don't know exactly what people need. Right. And so we need to keep having these hypotheses and testing them and validating them and be able to say definitively, people want, you know, these kind of activities to be subscription based or people want them to be ad hoc mm. uh, and on demand. Uh, that's something that we're trying to answer right now. And we're getting, you know, a bit of data on both sides, but we need to get to the point where we can, you know, say, okay, we structure things one way or another and we need to get to there, you know, within a certain time frame. And sure. you, so you have a time frame. you're saying, okay, after this, then we make a decision and move forward. Kind yeah. Of thing. And that we've had enough conversations or enough, you know, we've asked people to buy and we know that people will, will or won't buy that. Mm -hmm. um, right. We need to get there. Yeah. My, I, yeah. I actually heard a great piece of information and, and I don't know if he's the first person to say it or not, but Alan Corey at one of his presentations that he, he was doing here, he said that uh, plans are useless, but planning is priceless. Right. And so in that same sort of way, I, I really like to think by that school of thought. I mean, if you project a year out in startup culture in three months, you're totally like you're just in a different direction that it's useless. It's not that you're not reaching them. Right. It's just yeah. that they're not even relevant right. anymore. But you have to often. go through yeah. the exercise of looking that far <laughs> in advance right. or else you're just going to get slaughtered right. because you don't know what's coming around the corner. And you yeah. Yeah. Any forethought. So yeah. you plan direction, you plan steps and where you're going to go next yeah. uh, to have concrete like objectives that we meet or not meet this is yeah. often irrelevant. That's so, right. But yeah, that's by generating imaginating numbers for two or three years down the road is, is not helpful for anybody. Unless really. you're going to a bank. It will be. Maybe, yeah. but but maybe if you want to yeah. impress investors with Yeah, if with you're looking for investment numbers, money, yeah. you probably have to do a... Yeah, mm -hmm. fair Something enough. Like that. But yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, so I, the last kind of thing I want to ask about, I guess, is um, you, know, you, you have these... Uh, what, what's the word for them? retail partners or providers? Experience vendors. vendors. Yes, experience yeah. vendors. Yep. There we go. Uh, experience vendors um, that are providing these experiences. Um, you you have to go and source these people locally. So I'm guessing as you're expanding Happenate out from this geographic center, that means doing a lot more work finding those experience vendors for different geographical areas, right? Um, have you guys thought about future expansion and where that's going to go and how that's going to look? And absolutely, you know? absolutely. It's something we, I mean, we're building a a global business. We wouldn't be doing this if we wanted to just be this region only, right? Uh, and so that's that needs to be part of our plan from the beginning. Yeah. We, what we've learned is that the supply side is the easy one in this marketplace. You often mm. find one side or the other is, is easy or hard. Right. Supply side is easy for us. And in fact, in the way that, and so supply side would be the vendors or the merchants. Sure. Um, and, and what the advantage that we have too is that uh, we can often... Uh, build up the supply side kind of a bit on demand. Mm. So if we're entering a new market or we're getting a customer that has, you know, locations in a whole bunch of places, we can start to fill in the supply side as they need it. Right. And, and it's actually the best way to reach out to a vendor. Imagine, you know, getting a call up, Hey, I've got uh, 35 uh, people from a local business. I'd like to book a time, you know, I've got my credit card here. I'd like to book them two weeks from now. Yeah. And can you put me in touch with someone because we'd like to list you so that we can send groups regularly to you. Right. You know, what vendor is going to say no to, <laughs> yeah, you know, let us pay sell. you money and then send more business to you regularly. Right. Um, and if we do that, you know, more than not on demand, mm -hmm. then we're not, you know, making these investments where we think that, you know, whatever it is, Almira is going to be the next place. And we get uh, a whole ton of vendors there and, and not get the, the workplaces. So. Right, right. No, that yeah. makes sense. But, uh, well, it's good to know that there's a vision for, uh, for moving out into the future. Cause I, you know, I think it sounds like a really, really cool, not just a cool business, but a cool thing to participate in, mm -hmm. you know, as a, you know, as a, as a team member at a workplace, I think it's great. Um, so to think that, you know, Toronto or Hamilton might be missing out because they're not quite on the map yet. <laughs> yeah. You or know. can you, can you call Walmart? They might need a little, a little help. <laughs> <All right. you> <laughs> know. There's some big yeah. U S markets, right? Yes. Yes. So. There yes, are some sure. people there too. Um, very cool. Um, 
before we wrap up, uh, wrap up here, guys, if our listeners want to go and, and kind of see what you guys are all about or track you uh, as you're, you know, moving forward here, um, I'm guessing, you know, you, I know you have a website. Is there a Twitter account or a Facebook page mm-hmm. or whatever? Where, where can we find you online? All, all of those things are at Happenate. So H-A-P-P-E-N-A-T-E, uh, Happenate.com. We've got uh, Twitter handle Happenate. Uh, there's ways to contact us on the website. You can kind of start to look at some of the activities uh, that are mm-hmm. available and, uh, We'd love to chat with anyone on any side of the equation, whether you're a provider of these kind of activities or uh, a business that would like to to reward your teams with these kinds of things. Awesome. And if if you're not local to Kitchener-Waterloo, um, are you you're start, still open to have that conversation? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> start telling us. I mean, we we ha- you know we're starting to add you know the notches of you know where sh- where should we go next, and if okay. you want to influence that decision, uh, we're happy to have that. Awesome. Yeah. Exciting awesome. time. Good to know. Um, well, listen, uh, thank you so much, guys, for uh, joining us here today. Um, Thanks for having you. us. Yeah, awesome to have you on board, despite our initial uh, technical difficulties in yep. getting things set up. Um, yeah, and thank you to our listeners once again, guys. Thanks for joining us on another episode of TSB Weekly. Um, we also want to thank the Velocity Garage for uh, letting us record in the strong bad room here today. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> There's a little coach. Z for you guys who follow Homestar <laughs> Runner. And uh, we want to remind you, our listeners, please feel free to send us your comments, questions, criticisms, or feedback. You can reach us via email at feedback at tspweekly.com or feel free just to drop a comment on this uh, at the post for this episode on our website at tspweekly.com. Um, so from myself, Darren Conley, my co-host Stephen Campbell, and from our guests, Chris Braun and Corey Schnoor at Oh, I said schnorr. That's okay. Schnur. That's it. Start That's over. happening. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, guys, for joining us today, and we'll see you all again next week. Cheers. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks. <laughs>